Hi everyone, I am Harish Kodaba from the Centre for Advanced Robotics at Queen Mary University of London. Today I will present our work on achieving variable stiffness in soft robot grippers by utilizing a novel technique of shape morphing. So we know that robotic grasping and manipulation are very important tasks. In our day-to-day -day lives, we utilize grasping and manipulation quite a lot and we would like to translate some of these capabilities into our robots for the industry. And here you see a fully actuated robot hand that can actually uh, grasp objects and also manipulate them. But what is uh, challenging here is that these robot hands require a high level of sensorization and very precise control to actually conduct these precise grasping and manipulation tasks. In contrast, if you look at a human hand, we see that the two joints of a finger are actually underactuated, are basically coupled together and have some degree of underactuation. So researchers have taken cue from the underactuated nature of a human fingers to develop underactuated grippers. So what does underactuation mean? If you look at this uh, two fingered gripper here, so each finger here has two joints. However, this whole finger is driven by just one tendon. So you have two degrees of freedom, which are two rotational degrees of freedom, but you just have one degree of freedom control, which is um, offered by controlling the length of this tendon. So by embedding under actuation, we can actually achieve some very interesting capabilities like uh, robustness to impact and also uh, some compliance while interacting with this environment and conformability when this gripper is trying to grasp a physical object as you can see in this uh, video and you actually need a very low level of control to achieve this kind of interesting capabilities now encouraged by these interesting capabilities of under actuated systems many other researchers have also tried to develop under actuated soft grippers for compliant grasping here you see a tendon driven elastomer manipulator. So basically you have an elastomer manipulator which essentially is an infinite degrees of freedom body with just one or more tendons to actuate it. A lot of the pneumatic soft grippers we see in literature are also examples of underactuated systems. This is because the elastomer bodies again are infinite degrees of freedom structures and they have only one or several pneumatic actuation chambers embedded into these structures. Now, uh, remembering the first video where we saw very precise manipulation of, a, of an object, now we try to ask the question, how do we embed dexterity into these underactuated grippers so that we can not only utilize the compliance and the conformability of these grippers, but also have some level of precision control for other type tasks where we would like to make use of precise actuation and movement of these grippers. Here is our answer. We develop a novel stiffness variability mechanism so that we can actually control the stiffness of specific regions in this structure. And then when this whole structure is actuated by a tendon, then we can actually have different types of deformation in the stiff and soft regions. So to explain more in more detail, we developed this two fingered robot gripper which is composed of two fingers that are made of TPU, a soft and flexible material. And the geometry of this finger is designed in such a way that some regions which we denote here as flexure hinges are actually more flexible compared to some rigid regions which we denote as skeleton. And now these flexure hinges are designed in such a way that you also have some flaps whose shape can be changed and by changing the shape or by morphing the shape of these flaps, we can control the stiffness of this flexure hinge. So now when the fabric tendon that goes along this entire length of the finger is actuated, you can actually have different type of deformation in the regions which are stiffened by actuating these flaps and as compared to the regions which are not stiffened by not actuating the flaps. How does this variable stiffness mechanism work. 
So here is another view of this 3D printed finger. Here we see that the finger has some regions which has uh, slightly thinner areas which we call as the flexure hinge. So when you apply movement at the end of this finger, generally it's a flexure hinge that deforms first. Now we also have flexible flaps attached to the flexure hinge. They're basically thin layers that are soft and easy to deform. Now we develop an analytical model to examine what is the effect of this angular flexible flap on the overall stiffness of this flexure hinge. And uh, we actually see that when we when we fold this uh, flexible flap, this causes a change in the cross section, which in a way also affects the second moment of area for this particular beam. And we know from the uh, Euler Bernoulli beam theory that uh, EI or the Young's modulus multiplied by the second moment of area actually gives rise to the overall flexural rigidity of this uh, beam. Now, by controlling the angle of the beam, we can control this uh, second moment of area, which in turn controls the stiffness of this flexure hinge. So to test this hypothesis, we actually fabricate three different uh, flexure hinges with different flap angles. So 15 degrees, 45 degrees and 60 degrees. And we see that as the flap angle increases, this flexure hinge actually becomes stiffer and needs larger load to achieve the same deflection. Now we try to embed some actuation into this flexible flap so that we can actually use, we can actually build a structure with flat flaps and then control the stiffness by, by morphing the shape of these flexible flaps. So we develop this small pouch actuators. Basically, it's a, a pouch made from two TPU layers and when we inflate the pouch, the pouch bulges, pulling its ends closer to one another. Now, when these ends are attached to the flexible flaps, we can actually use pneumatic pressure to control the angle of the fl flexible flaps. So here you can see that as we control the pressure of the, of the pneumatic pouch, the angle of the flexible flap changes. Then we also tested um, what is the flexural stiffness of this flexure hinge at different actuation pressures for this embedded pouch. And we see that as the pressure increases from 0 kilopascal all the way to 100 kilopascal, the stiffness can almost double itself. Now that we have shown we can control the geometry of these flexible flaps and thereby the stiffness of the flexural hinges, we develop this two-fingered gripper that utilizes the shape morphing based variable stiffness to achieve different configurations. So the construction of this gripper is, is as follows. We have this motion transmission box with two motors and we have these two 3D printed TPU fingers with fabrics passing all along the length of each finger. And each of these finger has two flexural hinges with flaps and pneumatic pouches embedded in the flexure hinges. Now, when we control the pressure of the pneumatic pouch embedded in the flap, we can control the effective stiffness of this flexure hinge. And we have pneumatic regulators that can control the pressure of each of these pneumatic pouches independently. So now we try to examine what are the different configurations that we can achieve using this gripper. So what we do is we either activate or deactivate the four pouches in these four flexural hinges. So you can see in this slide that when the pouch is activated, it says one. And when the pouch is not actuated, it says zero. So normally when none of the pouches are actuated and we just utilize the motors to drive the tendons, we reach the configuration as shown in A. But now if you actuate the pouches that are close to the base, as you can see in the case B, you see that these flexure hinges become stiff and the tendon drives the flexure hinge that is farther from the base to actuate and make a hook shape. 
So now by actuating different combinations of these pouches, we can achieve all these different configurations of uh, shapes for this two-fingered gripper. Now we test the efficacy of this gripper by uh, conducting some clasping tasks and a lot of different daily objects. So here we are grasping a rigid cubic box and we see that the gripper nicely conforms when actuated and uh, it can firmly hold this cubic box. Next we grasp a rigid cylindrical tube and the gripper can again nicely conform to the structure. Yeah, and uh, you can finally lift this structure. Now here is a soft bear and interestingly because of this uh, irregular shape what we do here is we stiffen the pouches here which makes the flexible finger take this hook shape that can nicely conform with this uh, teddy bear. And finally we mount this soft gripper on a Franca robot arm and we demonstrate a teddy operation setup so that we can utilize this to actually transfer the spool holder from this top shelf to the bottom shelf. And the interesting ability that this gripper gives us is that it not only conforms to this uh, structure very well, but it can also be robust when there's some impacts. You're quite likely to encounter some interactions with the nature in uh, extreme environments. In conclusion, we developed a novel approach to design and model a shape morphable flexure hinge to achieve variable stiffness. And we utilize the shape morphable flexure hinge to develop a low cost two fingered soft gripper with multiple modes for grasping. In the future work, we'll try to develop new techniques to harness dexterity and also explore more applications of the stiffness variability in this flexible finger. And further, we'll also investigate grasping forces and the response times both of the tendon based actuation and stiffness variation in this soft, flexible finger. Thank you very much for listening to my talk. Please feel free to address any questions to this email noted here. Thank you.